Hey guys, this is Mr. Barthold, um, and the uh, objective of this video, uh, basically I'm just going to go through two, uh, two examples um, of conservation of momentum problems, uh, and we're going to talk about the difference between what's called an inelastic and an elastic collision. Um, it's the first objective, and also hopefully by the end of it you will, it's kind of hard to measure this other objective, but... Um, hopefully you'll have some sort of more of an understanding of the general how the equations sort of look for the two main types of uh, collisions that occur. Um, so uh, this one, um, in this first example, this is uh, basically just generally when objects collide and bounce off of each other. Uh, this is called an elastic collision when they bounce off of each other. Or and uh, one way or the way I always remembered it was kind of like a, a bouncy ball or a rubbery ball is kind of stretchy, elastic, you know, that kind of, trying to relate those two words. Um, so uh, in this example, we have a, 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 if you imagine a player hitting a tennis ball, um, so a tennis ball of a certain mass collides with a tennis racket, and um, during a game, the ball approaches the racket at a speed of 15 meters per second, and... Um, the player swings his racket at a speed of 29, striking the ball. So, given so, if you know how fast the ball um, bounces off the racket, at what speed does the racket um, recoil? Or you know, usually the the racket will kind of jerk backwards a little bit, or we'll or we'll see what happens. So, just kind of gaining an understanding of what's going on. Uh, so, we have a tennis ball that is going towards a racket, right? And draw the racket here, you know, something, something like that. And this, the racket is traveling, I guess, towards the ball. So a key thing to, to recognize here is that they are traveling in opposite directions. So um, just for this problem, I'm going to say that the, the ball has a velocity of, um, let's see, the ball approaches the racket at a speed of 15. So a positive 15 velocity. And the racket is traveling towards the ball. So I'm going to say that that is a negative 29 meter per second velocity. All right. And then afterwards, well, I'm kind of running out of room here. Afterwards, the ball will bounce back. So after, I'll put it in a different color. Afterwards, the ball is going to bounce back at a speed of 36. What do we notice now? Now the ball is traveling to the left. So the ball has the negative velocity. And the racket, you know, velocity equals we're not we're not sure. It might it, it might bounce back or uh, recoil back. We'll see. So, how to set up this problem? Uh, we're going to use conservation, obviously. And uh, so our conservation of momentum, C O M, for short, basically that the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. P F. All right, and so in this case, or in this example, you have, so the objects are always separate in this case, right? Because you have the ball and the racket, and they bounce off each other. They're, they're separate at all times. So we're going to look at the momentum of the system where we have two objects. So initially, the initial momentum, M1, M1, V1, M2, V2, right? So we can say M1, V1 is the ball, M2, V2 is the racket. And then finally, so afterwards, the expression to represent the momentum after the collision is going to be well, it's basically the same exact thing. It's just we're going to we're gonna add a subscript, F, for final. M2, V2, final. And so this is, so the, the expression on the left represents the initial, and the expression on the right represents the final. And from here it's just a uh, matter of um, looking at the numbers that we have. So the mass of the ball we said was 0 0.057 kilograms times, and I, sorry I'm trying to write small, it's going to be kind of messy, 15 meters per second, we said that one was positive, plus the momentum of the racket, remember the racket is traveling the opposite direction, so its velocity is going to be negative 29 meters per second. And that's going to equal 
our final moment. I'm going to switch colors here, just, just to separate, because I'm going to have to go to the next line. That's going to equal the final momentum, which um, we said the ball was going to bounce back. So again, the mass of the ball again, 0 0.057 kilograms times the velocity is now backwards, so negative 36, plus the final momentum of the racket, which you don't know all of it yet. 0.15 is the mass, kilograms, times the final velocity, whatever that final velocity is. So again, initial momentum and final momentum. It really, really helps to draw a picture like we did on the last slide. Hopefully you drew that down. If you didn't, then I would go back and draw it. Because um, now we just we have all these numbers and math, uh, but it's not that bad, right? You just have to solve for VF. So we're going to combine the terms on the left side. That times that plus that times negative that gives us uh, negative 3.495 was the total initial momentum. And that's going to equal the final momentum, um, which is negative, or the, I guess the right side of the equation. Negative 2.052 kilogram meters per second plus 0.15 VF. So solving this for VF, we just add the 2.02 to the other side and uh, kilograms meters per second equals 0.15 VF and so VF equals negative 9.62 meters per second. So what happened? Initially the racket was traveling at negative 29 meters per second, so it was traveling to the left at a speed of 29 meters per second. After the collision it was traveling with a speed of 9.6 meters per second to the left. So it did slow down. It's still moving to the left after the collision, but it did slow down a fair amount due to the collision with the ball. Alright, so in this case the racket has a positive impulse. All right, its momentum changed more towards the right and the ball was motion changed more towards the left, so that would be a negative impulse. All right, um, next example. Two objects stick together after impact. Um, this is an inelastic collision. So this, uh, this would be like, you know, for instance, number two on your homework assignment, or um, number, uh, number four as well. And actually, this is a very similar to number four. This is a very classic physics problem. Um, a, a bullet is shot into a wooden block, and this should say it, not I. In. So it embeds it, or no, it said embeds itself, excuse me. So a bullet of mass uh, 0 0.0026 kilograms, that has that velocity, and it embeds itself into a wooden block. Determine the velocity of the bullet and the block right after the bullet's impact. All right, so what's going on? We have a bullet traveling really, really fast, 380 meters per second. And it's going to crash into this block, which is at rest initially. I didn't specify that, but it, it is at rest. And then afterwards, the bullet is going to embed itself into the block. And this whole, uh, this will be moving at some velocity. All right, so this is an inelastic collision. The objects are not bouncing off each other. They're sticking together, and they're becoming one mass. So what's this one going to look like? Forward. Oh, there it is. Um, so the initial momentum of the system, again, conservation of momentum, P1 equals PF. So initially we have... M1V1 plus M2V2. And this, I'm going to switch colors again. That's the initial momentum. And the final momentum for an inelastic collision, how it's typically written, since the objects stick together, they're basically acting as one mass. So it's typically written as M1 plus M2. Because now that... You know, now the, the total mass of the block and the bullet is, you know, if you were to pick up the block, the bullet would come with it, right? It's all one, it's almost one object now that they're um, together. And so those two objects together will have a single velocity because they will be moving um, simultaneously. So 
Um, so yeah, so this is the typical, you know, structure. You know, kind of like I said, and hopefully, you just kind of see how it's the mathematical structure of the problem. This it's nearly um, always written like this. Whereas an inelastic collision, you have two separate ones, right? M one, M two equals M one plus M two. You know, separately. In a inelastic problem, it's typically written as M one plus M two as one term. So. Looking at so looking at this specific problem, the bullet, um, the uh, initial momentum of the bullet. Let's see what we have. The mass was 0 0.0026 kilograms. Sorry for the bad writing there. Ooh, that's just here. I'm gonna read. That's just awful. Get out of here. Block. Yes, Kil kilograms. There we go. Times the velocity, uh, which was 380 meters per second, plus the momentum of the block. Uh, the block is initially at rest, so the velocity is zero, right? So that's so the initial momentum of this is zero. That's going to equal the total momentum, so 0 0.0026 plus 0 0.70, right, times VF. So this is the total mass times VF. So this one is um, much easier to solve. Uh, we have, let's see, 0 0.0026 times 380. Oops, excuse me. Calculator, 0.988 kilograms meters per second equals the new mass, 0 0.7026 times VF. This is kilograms, right? So we divide by kilograms, cancel the kilograms out. So VF, when we divide by both sides, gives us... Um, 1.41 meters per second. Notice that the bullet was traveling very fast, 380 meters. That's basically, you know, a football field a second. And once it embeds in the block, it is going much, much more slowly. So, um, just it's, um, just kind of again, what this might look like. Let's say you have a larger object that separates into two smaller ones. How might that look whenever? You know, for instance, um, on the homework number three, you have a rocket and a booster that are combined at the beginning, and then the booster separates at the end. Um, how, how, how might that look? You know, again, just kind of the general, the general mathematical framework. So you have, let's say you have two pieces, M1 and M2, right? Two smaller pieces, M1 and M2. How might it look? It's basically like the opposite of an inelastic collision. You start off, oops, initial. You start off with combined masses and an initial velocity. And then you end with two separate masses. Or, yeah, two separate masses or, or two separate uh, momenta as well. Final plus M2V2 final. All right, so that might, that might be how that looks. Or maybe um, an object is moving and mass adds to it. Um, you know, if you drop something on a wagon while it's moving, or sand on a dump truck, or you know, something along those lines. What uh, you know, you might have an initial. It's just one object, right? It's just one object, and so you might have an initial momentum with that one object, and then you have finally a new mass. Right, you, you added some mass, mass added times whatever the new velocity is, right? So I mean, all, all of these use the same idea, initial momentum equals final momentum. Um, and it just, it just really depends on the situation. Sometimes they bounce apart, and so you have two separate momentum terms at the end. Sometimes they stick together, so you only have one term. Um, it, it really does depend. So look at the problem, analyze the problem, draw a picture, drawing pictures really helps with this, and um, look at, uh, you, know, you know, try to, you know, logically figure out how you're going to arrange, you know, mathematically write this out so that you can work towards a, a numerical answer. So I hope this uh, video helps, um, and uh, I will see you all in class. Goodbye.